Okay, so uh, some people might be new to Drupal Commerce, and uh, most of you have seen uh, and tried out Drupal Commerce before. Uh, this presentation is somewhere in between uh, beginner and intermediate. It's um, an introduction to uh, how you apply various rules in uh, Drupal Commerce. And uh, I'm going to cover uh, Commerce, Commerce Kickstart rules, and uh, then I'm going to show you an overview of all the modules which have uh, rules uh, that you can find in the rules module and those which you can find in the Commerce module. And uh, then I'm going to give a live demo of a site. Hopefully that should work. And so I'm going to finish it off with a custom code example showing a a uh, custom module that uh, adds another action to the rules. So the commerce module is a collection of 21 modules and uh, you can use it to build a very nice e-commerce uh, website or even an uh, e-commerce app. It uh, relies heavily upon uh, rules and views. It's uh, pretty much integrated with uh, those two modules and um, when you uh, use uh, the shopping cart in uh, Drupal Commerce. Everything is uh, based upon views, so it's very easy to add or, or delete things. But I'm not going to cover views, I'm going to focus on rules. It's uh, very flexible, and uh, all the products in uh, Drupal Commerce are entities. So there's a link here which you can uh, use uh, when you uh, get the slides afterwards. So uh, Drupal Commerce allows you to create product types with custom attributes. Uh, it uh, leverages on the entity uh, system in uh, Drupal. So all your uh, product types are and uh, products are automatically uh, exportable. It's uh, got uh, dynamic product displays and uh, it takes care of the order management. So in the back end you can easily find the uh, order and the uh, uh, purchased cards that people have um, bought. There's a uh, API which allows you to integrate with uh, a number of uh, payment gateways and there's a uh, tax calculation and VAT support built in. You can uh, easily do things like uh, create discounts which uh, is something that we'll take a look at later on and uh, it's uh, very well integrated with systems like fields, views, rules and entity API. There's also a very nice collection, uh, a distribution, a Drupal distribution called uh, Commerce Kickstart, which installs 110 modules when you fire it up. And uh, then if you choose to add the demo store, it adds another 43 demo modules to import all the content. This is likely to be the quickest way to get an e-commerce store up and running on Drupal. If you're looking for a full and complete e-commerce store, this is uh, going to take you a long way. And uh, it uh, comes with an attractive theme. And uh, there's also a catalog and uh, search is uh, configured uh, already. It's also got a very nice back office, which is more uh, suitable than the uh, ordinary Drupal uh, back office for uh, handling all the products. Now the rules module is a module that acts uh, based on uh, certain events. It's uh, a very extensive framework which we'll see later on and uh, it replaces the module trigger. In uh, Drupal core there's a module trigger which uh, is very basic compared to uh, Drupal rules. And uh, Rules is currently at version 2.6 from October last year. It's uh, used on uh, 200,000 websites. And uh, in addition to having events that based on certain conditions uh, can uh, fire up actions, it also has some very uh, nice features uh, which allows you to build components. So you can build uh, events and conditions and actions, and then you can reuse them afterwards. I'm not going to cover that right now. It's uh, also possible to act uh, on lists. So if, for example, you have a taxonomy, you can uh, go through the entire taxonomy, which is added to the product, and act on one item after the other. 
and uh, the conditions can also be uh, customized with uh, and and or so you can build uh, conditional trees uh, which uh, controls how your actions uh, will fire and uh, if you enable uh, the PHP uh, module you can even uh, create uh, custom codes inside uh, Drupal uh, inside your rules here's a few links uh, I hope there's a way I can share the slides afterwards. Yeah. So when I, <laughs> when I share the slides afterwards, uh, you can follow these links to a very nice uh, and comprehensive selection of uh, podcasts, video podcasts from uh, Johan Palk at Wunderkrat Sweden, where he explains uh, every possible thing you can possibly do with, uh, with rules. It's very... Uh, well done and uh, it goes through everything from the basic examples to how you can integrate it with things like uh, the uh, uh, views uh, what's the <laughs> there's a module called views uh, video v views uh, yeah it <laughs> escapes me at the minute what uh, VBO stands for um, but he has uh, 32 chapters exercises that uh, you can uh, go through and uh, there's also a very nice book which you can uh, there's also a nice book which you can find on uh, Safari books online and uh, I have a link here I tried uh, when I started out making this slideshow. I tried uh, looking into the modules and I tried somehow uh, comprehending all the uh, possible rules and events, conditions and actions that you can possibly find. But as you can see here, there's 28 events, 10 conditions, and 27 actions. So uh, putting all that into half an hour was simply not possible. I'll see what I can do with uh, the live demo. Uh, there's uh, events, conditions, and actions for the comments, data, entity, node, path, PHP system, taxonomy, and user module. And out of these, you get automatically when you enable, when you enable rules, you get uh, user system, node, entity, and data. And the others uh, will automatically appear when you enable uh, the, uh, the modules. There's also ways to integrate with uh, Drupal Commerce. So you can integrate uh, with actions for the cart. And there's also actions for checkout, line item, order, payment, price, product reference, and tax. And uh, on top of that, if you enable Drupal Commerce Kickstart, you get another uh, approximately uh, 15 uh, modules which uh, you uh, yeah, views bulk operations that was the one I was looking for uh, which uh, so you get 15 more modules which you can uh, uh, use in views which, which you can use in rules so now it's time to show the uh, demo site We've got about uh, 20 minutes to explore some of the things we can do in uh, Drupal Commerce when we're using rules. And uh, I set up a demo site with Drupal 7.26 uh, installed. It's got some additional modules in addition to, to uh, Drupal Core. And uh, I've also created three products, and I created a view for the products. So that's as far as I've taken this demo site before we started this presentation. So here we go. Here's my little store of uh, kitten. We got three kittens for sale, and uh, one is uh, and their price uh, differently. And uh, I've created a view here. And this is actually the anonymous view. Let me just see if I can find. Here's the admin view. So uh, just going to quickly show you which uh, <coughs> settings I've used to uh, set up uh, the uh, view which we're looking at. So I created a view where I have a table of uh, kitten. 
and uh, there's a kitten image, a title, a product ID, the price, and the ads to cart form. So now we can take a look at uh, the places inside the configuration where we can find various uh, configuration related to to uh, rules inside uh, Drupal uh, Commerce. Everything in Drupal Commerce is uh, found under a tab called Store. So when you install uh, Drupal uh, Commerce, you'll find a uh, list here where you have customer profiles, discounts, order, products, and configuration. And we're going to look at the configuration now for payment methods, product pricing, and taxes. So payment um, modules, uh, payment gateway modules can be uh, uh, installed and added to Drupal Commerce. It doesn't ship with any uh, particular payment gateway. But you can enable uh, additional uh, payment gateways through this interface. I'm going to confirm that I want to enable PayPal. Uh, there's also some settings here which I'm not going to look at right now. Then we have the rules for uh, product pricing, configuration, product pricing rules. And here we can see that uh, when we install uh, Drupal Commerce, it automatically uh, creates uh, three rules. It's a rule to unset the price of disabled products in the cart, which uh, I guess was useful for uh, creating Drupal Commerce. Then there's a very useful uh, rule here to, uh, to calculate taxes, and since uh, this is meant to be used in uh, the United States, it differentiates between sales tax and VAT. Uh, I'm from Norway, so I don't know, do you have sales tax here? No, you only have the VAT of uh, 20%. And... Uh, I'm going to start by adding a tax rate, which we need uh, in order to work with taxes. So I'm adding the VAT. There's a title, and then there's a display title. So you can have uh, a short or a more elaborated title in your uh, administration administration interface. And the rate here is uh, 0 0.2. In Norway, it's 25%. This is the VAT, and I'm saving a tax rate. After you apply the tax rates, uh, your products uh, might have to be uh, updated, so it's very recommendable that you set up the tax rate before you add any products. Let's see here, if I go to my products uh, and uh, edit one of them, there's an additional drop-down menu, which uh, uh, allows you to set whether it's inclusive of a certain tax or if it's uh, exclusive. I'm just going to keep it at none right now. Okay, so uh, here it's uh, shown uh, without uh, the, uh, or it's, uh, it will show the price which I've entered. So in this table of products, you will see the price that uh, people enters. And now when I go to have a look at my view again, I'm refreshing uh, the screen. It's uh, still showing without uh, the VAT because that's uh, how I set it up. So when I add something to the cart, I'm adding kitten one to the cart. It's uh, it, it gives me automatically a uh, response message uh, saying that it's added to my cart. I can see that uh, in the cart it's uh, automatically shown with the uh, the uh, VAT included and if I proceed to checkout you'll see that uh, the uh, VAT is, uh, is calculated and it applies a discount. That was from my 
my uh, testing earlier. Let me see here if I can. Uh, well, it's uh, it's added a discount because I configured a discount under discounts, and um, just get. I'll delete my discount because. Uh, I don't want it to interfere with the rules that we're going to work at uh, afterwards. So going back to my uh, shopping cart, if I try to add uh, Kitten 2, it will also appear inside my cart. And uh, now that we got the cart open, let's see if we can do something with the pricing. Let's see. First of all, let's have a look at the rules, the uh, interface for working with rules. You'll find it under configuration, workflow and rules. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to change the settings and I'm going to enable debugging so we can take a look at what's uh, going on in the system. I'll tick this checkbox or a radio button to always show the debug information. And uh, in my case, I don't want it to appear at the top. I'll put it in the footer so that we don't have to scroll in this presentation. Okay. Going back to the rules. We'll find the uh, rules that we looked at earlier for uh, calculating the uh, sell price of a product. Here's the sales tax, the VAT and uh, the uh, payment gateway that we enabled and I'm going to start uh, this demo by adding a new rule I'll call this my test rule and uh, as we can see here, here's the five um, actions that we can act on uh, upon comments and there's also for discounts, commerce cart, commerce checkout and I'm not going to go through all of them right now I'm going to act on something which is very basic so we can see how rules is actually working I'll start by creating a, view, a rule which um, acts whenever Drupal is uh, initializing And uh, it gives me a second screen where I have an uh, overview of the events and the conditions and the actions. Underneath the conditions, you'll find a uh, way to add uh, the, uh, the or or and, which I'm not going to use in this example, and so uh, you'll also find a way to add actions, and uh, this is where you can add loops. There should also be a place, okay, that's uh, in the other place. In, in rules, you'll also find the uh, link to create components, which I'm not going to cover now. So I'm going to add a basic action just to so we can see that uh, everything is working here. There's a uh, rule under uh, system uh, or an event action under a system called uh, show a message on the site. And uh, I'll just type in hello world. Since I've enabled uh, PHP module, I can also execute PHP here. And uh, if I place my PHP inside the PHP tags, it will be evaluated. And if I do any mistakes, I might mess up the entire site. Tokens are also available. It gives me, by default, it gives me all the tokens for site information. And if I had selected a different uh, condition, I might have enabled more information here. <coughs> I 
I want this to be a status message and uh, I want it to be repeated. So now we have, uh, whenever we click somewhere, it's going to show us hello world, which isn't actually the most useful example, but it shows you how you work with views, how you work with rules. So let me go back to my overview and uh, delete that one. This is a custom, uh, it's going to show you which one are available by default and which ones are available as custom rules which you have created. So I'm just going to delete this one. And uh, let's see if we can do something with the uh, products of the shopping cart. There's something here about calculating the sell price of a product. So I'm going to create an action here to or a rule that uh, acts on the event uh, calculating the price. And uh, I'm going to uh, try to uh, create a, um, a discount rule. So we have to find here the uh, calculating the uh, the uh, sell price of a product, which uh, should be under products. There's also a way here to add tags. If we are creating a large number of uh, of uh, rules, we can create tags, so it's easier to find them. So we have created a rule called discounts and we have uh, an event here calculating the sell price of a product. It's also possible to create more events here. So for example, I could add additional events here and the rule would fire whenever one of these uh, rules or the events uh, took place. Here I'm going to add an action again. I'm going to add an action to change the uh, price. So for the line items, we're going to uh, multiply the unit price by some amount. And um, here we can enter a value and uh, there's some settings as well. It's possible here to uh, act on the base price, discount, or the fee, or a VIT, and I'm going to act on the base price. And uh, we also have the options here to uh, not do any rounding, or we can round to the half, or we can uh, round to the even, the nearest even or odd number. So I'll add, uh, I'll round the half up. If there's a half, I'll uh, round it up to the nearest even number. And save. And if we take a look at the shopping cart again, we'll see if uh, that's happening. So here we can see that uh, my kitten is now priced at 60 rather than uh, than uh, 100, and that's because it's included the VAT and it's divided by two. And if I add another kitten, I'll add kitten number two to the cart. That one is now priced at uh, 120. Now, this is useful if for some reason you want to have a sale of all your products. It's also possible here to limit. So we can limit by adding a condition. And uh, we can limit on a specific uh,
when the order contains a particular product. And uh, it's going to show a data selector. Th this data selector allows you to select. Uh yeah, here we go. It's just a little slow. Um, so I'm going to find my commerce line item. And inside the uh, line item, I'm going to. No. Let's see. going to sidestep and look at uh, a different uh, website to see what I actually did. So when the commerce line item, that's uh, the thing here. Let's see here. That was not very promising. <laughs> Let me see here. Uh, we were looking at the uh, configuration, the rules, and uh, So the line item, uh, I'm going to show you just uh, the the other website. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. That one, yeah. So if my product is uh, number one, it's going to apply the rule, and if the uh, that's not the case, it's not going to multiply by some amount. Now we have the discount only for number one and not for number two. So that was the easy part. Uh, now in this case the client asked for something more so they had some very particular discounts they were looking for. They wanted to sell the products at uh, a fixed price. Then they wanted to apply a discount so for the first item they wouldn't allow any discount and then if somebody bought more than one item it would add a discount which would be uh, great we could just find the uh, the factor and then divide and multiply but they insisted on not adding any discount on the first product which made things a little bit more interesting so that's when I finally had to I tried uh, various rules and I tried various uh, 
settings with a discount module and I ended up creating a custom module which was uh, surprisingly easy. So here's the code for adding, uh, for making an action available in uh, Drupal. You use the hook uh, rules action info and uh, prefix it uh, as you normally would do with the module name. And uh, here there's now a special price for you. That's the label, the parameters uh, are shown underneath. It takes the line item as an input. That's what comes from uh, the uh, event. And then there's some parameters. So we have uh, one, two, three, four parameters. And uh, I've added it to a uh, custom group, so it's easier to find in the menu. So what actually happens here is that uh, this uh, identifier of the array is now linked to a function. It's automatically linked by Drupal to a function. And uh, all I had to do was to uh, to uh, write that function with the same parameters. And there's some uh, code here which uh, got quite interesting. Here is the formula to uh, mo to create the uh, the uh, discounts. I think at some point I discussed with this client to add another line item so that uh, the discount would be shown on a new line item but I just wanted to have everything in one line. So that's why it appears in Drupal Commerce there's a limitation where you can only change the uh, per item cost of, uh, of uh, something. You cannot change the total which is what we originally wanted to do. So we ended up uh, writing uh, this function and a uh, formula to to uh, uh, create our discounts. And uh, it's possible to find it here in the interface. If we look at our rules, I think I've enabled uh, the module already. Let me just uh, see if it's uh, enabled. Nope, I have to enable it. And string the couple T. Okay, so now we have uh, the uh, module available for use and inside rules we can now change our discount so that instead of giving the the uh, fixed discount we can delete this one and we can add an action with the uh ah come on I have to flush cash because the rules are uh, cached. This uh, dropdown is cached. So now it should be here. No. Okay, let me just show you the one on the real side. Um, maybe there was some permission or something. I forgot to uh, change when I moved it over. Um, so it's uh, in Norwegian to make it a little bit more interesting. <laughs> and uh, here we go. We have the uh, fields that we uh, set up in the uh, the uh, codes. There's a line item. There's the amount, which is also a label shown in Norwegian. It starts from the second, and uh, I'm changing the base price, and uh, I'm not doing any rounding. So that's uh, something you can do in rules. If we have time, I'd like to also show a rule. I, I'm running five minutes over time now. Uh, I can show you a rule for uh, changing. If we want to have special price on a certain day, or if we want to have a Let's say we want to have a special price for Saturdays. 
we can use the uh, PHP field and uh, And uh, again, we're going to act on the event, uh, calculating the sell price of a product. And um, condition here is execute custom PHP code. And um, we have some interesting replacement patterns available. These are all tokens, and uh, as you can see now, we got access to everything which is in the product line item. So we can, and uh, the unchanged product line item, which uh, we can use as well. I'm going to use something from the site current date. So it's possible here, since uh, the current date is a string, we can use some string comparison on the the uh, token. I'm going to use uh, string position. So that finds the haystack first, and then we find the needle, which for us is Saturday. And then I'm going to compare that with not equals false just to be on the safe side so now it should return true or false it returns true on a saturday and he here it's very uh, important to not include the php start and end tags scroll down and uh, if we Look here, there's also an option to negate, so it's possible to uh, apply some rule where it's not in January or it's not, yeah. And again, I'm adding the action here to... I'll just uh, display a message just to wrap it up. So whenever it's calculating the sell price of a product, let's also, yeah. Just want to see that the rule works before I finish off. So it's Saturday. Yeah. Do you have any questions? other rules that uh, you'd like to ask about? So, you can adjust, you can adjust the line items, can you adjust the whole order as well? Can you do calculations on that? You can uh, do things, for example, you can react on uh, addresses, so if a uh, certain part of the address is, uh, is um, a certain country or a certain state or something like that, you can add additional uh, um, additional uh, taxes and or remove the taxes. Okay. Um, would it be possible to add something like if somebody's got a VAT number to react on that? Can you take other input? I haven't tried that, but um, if um, if you look at the um, The uh, the I recommend uh, this uh, resource from Node One, which uh, gives a lot of uh, information about rules in general. Okay.